Hello, and welcome to New Day Federal Way. I'm Kathy Arntz, Executive Assistant for Mayor Jim Farrell, and I'll be your host as we bring you a fresh look on Federal Way. We hope you'll come along as we highlight exciting events and activities happening right here in your community. On January 17th through the 20th of 2014, the City of Federal Way partnered with Todd Beamer High School to celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The weekend featured an assembly at Todd Beamer High School and a food drive that provided over 6,000 pounds of food to the Federal Way Multi-Service Center Food Bank and the Federal Way Senior Center Food Pantry. A breakfast sponsored by the Diversity Commission and Todd Beamer featured a keynote speech by Dr. Andre Sims. We start talking about change and the change that we want to see in, within our own community. Things that have to be done, things that we have to acknowledge our challenges and not run away from, it's going to cost us to make change. Dr. King was a very, very bright man. Dr. King graduated high school when he was 15 years old. Dr. King skipped the ninth grade, never attended the 12th grade, and he went to Morehouse College at the age of 15. My dad, reading his story, is my dad's story. When my dad knew that his dad hadn't graduated high school, none of his older brothers or sisters graduated high school, he found hope in Dr. King. So Dr. King has left legacies in many ways, and his struggle and his fight is intentional. It's purposeful. It was cognizant. He intended to suffer the things that he had to undergo for the purpose of the greater cause of the end goal, and the end goal was change. And as a culture, uh, as a community, we talk about change in federal way, and I just want to say that we're not going to see it apart from struggle. And so, you know, I'm, I'm always challenged by the fact that uh, when we start talking about Dr. King, we, we have people that stumble over his theology and his Judeo-Christian faith and so on and so forth. And I think that the key to what we see Dr. King having accomplished is to recognize that love is something that is demonstrated, not just communicated. And so while we may have an African-American president, and while we have opportunity to see a very diverse police force here in federal way, and while we're making progress with people of color in, in every strata of position of leadership, we haven't arrived at the change that we all desire to see and that Dr. King gave his life for. And we have to have tough conversations like that in order for us to realize that it's going to be a conscious struggle for us to get to where we say we want to go. And that's where we are as a, as a city. Uh, that's where we are as a community. We've done a lot of great things. I'm happy to be here. I don't intend to go anywhere. Uh, 13, for 14 years this August and counting. But I really am looking forward to the collaborative, collective effort of civil organizations, faith-based organizations, uh, those who have and those who don't, those who have been there and those who've never experienced it, the educational process and our leaders in our educational system that recognize that 23,000 kids with 83 different languages is, is difficult but not impossible for us to use for the benefit of the next generation. Thank you so much. Federal Way Mayor Jim Farrell and St. Francis Hospital President Tony McLean opened the celebration with welcoming remarks. When I was in college and through law school, I had this poster on my wall of Dr. King. And uh, behind it were the words, let freedom ring from every mountainside. And you see, I think when m most of us or many of us think of those iconic words, that nation-changing speech, words on that day in 1963 at the Lincoln Monument that are chiseled into the hearts and minds of all Americans. Those words from that speech will live forever. But you see, when I think of Dr. King and really think about who the man was and the impact that he had, he was 39 years old and he was taken. And I think about the sacrifice that he made, his children, his wife, his congregation, people that loved him, people that depended on him. Now. He is part of this iconic vision, but it's important to understand this, the real life sacrifice that he made. 
sacrifices. I mean, he had a doctorate degree. He had a, a, an amazing profession. He had all these things to live for. But you see, Dr. King will live in the hearts and minds of this, of this nation forever. When I think of Dr. King, I now think of not the speech at the Lincoln Monument, but I think about that letter he wrote from that jail cell in Birmingham. It would be so instructive for each of you at some point to go online or to go in any kind of resource material and read the letters from the Birmingham jail. Because therein lies the struggle. Therein lies what the true heart of what he believed and what he fought for and what he died for. You know, on a day like today where we come together, where we have the police chief and police officers, we've got the mayor, we've got the, the people that make up our government. But imagine what it was like. Context is everything, isn't it? Imagine what it would be like if those instrumentalities, those positions were not wrapped in a cocoon of love and support, but turned against its people. And that's what Dr. King and the movement encountered. And they did so with such grace and such overwhelming um, patience and passivity. Because at what Dr. King understood, what he knew intrinsically, is for the movement to succeed, it had to be done in a Gandhian, nonviolent manner. That the only way to truly address the injustice, the, the, the dripping, the, the sweltering and towering injustice, and the systematic injustice, in which the fire hoses and the dogs and the, and the nightsticks turned against its own people, shocking shocked and, and really terrified the American people. And it wasn't until those visions of Birmingham became made public nationally that the American people stood back and said, this, just, this injustice will not stand. And it was from that context that Dr. King wrote, wrote the following words. Getting a little bit older, so I gotta use my, my readers. But Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. He wrote that from a jail cell. Human progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of men willing, men and women, willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always right to do the right thing. Dr. King realized that one day those true heroes would be recognized. And he, write, he wrote toward the end, one day the South will know that when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for what is best in the American dream, thereby bringing our nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the Founding Fathers in their formulation of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. In closing, we know who those heroes were, and we know that we owe them a great debt. But you see, knowing is not enough. What we need to do moving forward is to recognize courage, recognize injustice, and come together when we see it, and stand up to it when we see it. Today is a day on, not a day off. Martin Luther King was a man who sacrificed so much for this country and so much for each and every one of us. And today we celebrate his legacy. Thank you all for being here. First speaker's name is Anthony McLean, president of St. Francis Hospital. Tony McLean has served as president of St. Francis Hospital in Federal Way since October 2008. Prior to joining the Franciscan organization, he was vice president of operations at Virginia Mason Health System in Seattle, where he provided oversight for clinical service lines and ambulatory care. Before that, he was administrative director of orthopedics and muscle, muscular skeletal care at Virginia Mason. He serves as the president of the South Puget Sound American Heart Association Board. He's also mayor of the Achieve Health Coalition 
board and serves on Washington State Hospital Association's Public Policy Committee. He earned a bachelor's degree from Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and a master's degree in health administration from Ohio State University in Columbus. Please join and welcome me, Mr. Tony McClain. I want to thank Greg for that generous introduction. Greg, I have one minor <laughs> correction. It's THE Ohio State University. <laughs> and I, I, I got to say, I grew up on the East Coast. I never thought I'd be a Buckeye. But once you go to Columbus, you can't go back. You move, but it just stays with you. Um, I, I'm really uh, delighted to be here today. Uh, the theme of today is we are one. Um, when I think about Dr. King and what he stood for, um, I remember um, the history of someone who was really brave. Mayor Farrell talked about the importance of being brave. Dr. King was brave. The students at the lunch counter were brave. And I, every Martin Luther King Day, I often wonder, like, what would he think of where we are? You know, what would his checkup um, do for us? What grade would he give us? And I won't quote the statistics on the progress we've made and the progress we still need to make, because I think you already know them. But when I think about Dr. King, the reason why I think he was fighting so hard wasn't just so that I would have the opportunity to talk to you today. His speeches that move me the most talk about what he wanted for his children in relationship to other children. And what I always hear when he talks about it is, I want people to see my children. I want people to see their humanity. Um, I don't simply want them to have access to opportunities. Um, inherent in a principle of nonviolence is that there's a human being on the other side of your fist. And if you see that humanity, you really can't be violent. You wouldn't want to, and in fact, you can't. And so my challenge to you today um, is I dare you to practice Ubuntu. I dare you to do that because the big picture change we have to make continues, and we need seven billion people on this planet to make the small changes that have to happen just as fast. Uh, there's this kid. He's got the form of leukemia that's 95% curable. He's 11 years old, 10 when he was diagnosed. Um, he, unfortunately, his way was the way of the 5% who never get better. Uh, so he's about five months away from uh, dying, and um, he acknowledges how boring it is to be in the hospital. One day, a volunteer came around with a cart full of really cool video games. I mean, not just donated video games, like the kind you would buy for yourself if you had all the money in the world. So he was blown away, and he's playing with the video game, and he asked his nurse, Kristen, who did this? She tells the story of Mikey. Uh, Mikey, who lost his battle with cancer, loved video games, and his parents started a foundation so that all the kids in the hospital would have that opportunity. This little boy, his name is Kyle, was so blown away by the kindness of others, the kindness that now he was the beneficiary of, that at that time he had read about these two girls from China who they kind of made millions um, making these bracelets and they sold you these kits and you could start your own business. Anyway, Kyle started his own bracelet making business in the hospital from his bed, uh, commandeered his family and his friends. The long short of it is between the doctors and the nurses and all of his uh, family members and friends, he raised thousands of dollars for Mikey's way. He gave the money to his dad to write a check. He wanted to pay it forward in the last few months of his life. Kyle was, is, my nephew. He died on Christmas Eve uh, last month. Um, I, I tell you all of this to somehow reach to that place in your heart that has become hardened, perhaps cocooned, uh, by the need for us to be brave out there and to protect ourselves from all the bad things and the bad people. 
you know, Mayor Farrell, all the people here uh, in the police department, on the city council, we will join you in fighting for all the big changes so that everyone has access to good schools and good jobs. And we need every single person to fight the individual fight because there will be no justice um, if I walk in this door because I can, but when I look into the eyes of the person on the other side of the door, they're not willing to see me, okay? So I just ask you, you probably interact with 100 people every week, and that's a modest, modest assumption. Um, I dare you, I dare you to look into their eyes and to see their humanity. I dare you to ask one question that will force you to learn just a little sliver about who they are. I promise you, I promise you that it will change your life in a small way that will have big impact over time, okay? I want to thank you for what you do every day in Federal Way in Tacoma. I want to thank you for being here. It was a choice. Um, and I just want to encourage you to um, take Dr. Dream's vision and make him uh, exceedingly proud, exceedingly proud of what we're choosing to do every single day. Um, I dare you to practice Ubuntu. Thank you. The event culminated with an inspiring keynote delivered by Aaron Jones, Director of Equity and Achievement with Federal Way Public Schools. As I drove up here, I was listening to Dr. King's speech that he gave at Bowdoin College in 1964. He started by saying, we have come a long, long way, but we have a long, long way to go. And I really believe I had the opportunity to do five Martin Luther King assemblies in the last four days. And so I've had many opportunities to talk about Dr. King. And one of the things as an educator over the last 23 years, one of the things that really has touched me is all too often we do these days and we check the box. We've done Martin Luther King Day. We've done our assembly for the year. And it really breaks my heart. I've been doing assemblies in schools, but it breaks my heart that we've checked the box now and done our thing and then we go back to the next day of school as if nothing has changed. And so today, I want to challenge us as a community to think about how do we really, again, as we said this morning, dare to dream and dream bigger than ourselves. Because I think that the way that we really honor Dr. King's legacy is not by doing speeches on Martin Luther King Day. It's not by putting out a bunch of pictures of Dr. King in our buildings. It's by us dreaming a dream that's bigger than ourselves. And us daring to live lives that challenge the norm, that challenge the status quo. And when we see people being mistreated, whether they're black or white or Asian or Latina, whether they're rich or poor, we choose to say something. And so I want us to think today about Dr. King's dream as really more than just a speech. Because I think for many of our young people, they've heard the I Have a Dream speech a million times, but it doesn't mean anything to them. One of the philosophies I believe is that without a vision, that people perish. And I see young people perishing every day. And I see young people perishing because my generation has lost their vision. They've lost their own dream. And how can you give a dream when you don't have one yourself? We give out of what we have. And if we are empty, we give out of empty. And so I'm going to challenge each one of us in this room, every young person and every adult, to dare to dream a dream bigger than yourself. When I speak to young people, there are three lessons I always share. And the first is it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. Dr. King, when he began, was a young man in the Deep South, a young black man in the Deep South, a Negro who wasn't expected to amount to anything. Because for many, they did not see him as a human being. And yet this young man at 15 graduated from high school and started college. By the time he was 26, had two PhDs. It doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. And so he made a choice to not allow his beginnings to determine his endings. And so I challenge us as a community to think about where we want to end. And if this is where we want to end, 
What do we need to be doing now? If we have no vision for what we want our community to look like, it won't happen by accident. We need to be intentional. And so I challenge us today to not look back at, at what has broken us, to not look back at what has divided us, but to look forward to what we dream to be. A community without homelessness, community without hunger, a community where every child has the opportunity to go to college if he or she chooses to. That's the community I dream of. Now, I, I drive from Olympia every day. I live in Olympia. And I drive here every day because I believe in the vision of this community. Every child, all means all. It doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. The second lesson that I share with young people is every decision you make matters. Well, Dr. King had many opportunities to quit the fight. Every phone call he got, every nasty letter he got, every threatening uh, word that was spoken out of a person's mouth, he could have chosen to stop fighting. He didn't ask to get into this, he was asked to join the fight. And there were many opportunities that he had to step away for his own security, his own safety, his own family. And yet he decided to fight every day. He chose to fight. And when he was beaten down, he got back up. Every choice we make matters. Every young person in this room, who you choose to hang out with, how you choose to do school, absolutely matters. For us adults, what kind of decisions are we making? If we're not intentional about our choices, things happen not by accident. And so injustice is being done around us every day. I want us to choose to be different, to choose to speak out. And then the last lesson that I, I want to, to share with you, and then I'm going to go back and kind of share my own journey with Dr. King. The last lesson is I want to challenge each one of us in this room to be our best selves every day. Which poem I'm talking about. But uh, it's a powerful poem that was made famous by Nelson Mandela. But it was actually written by Marianne Williamson. And it's a poem that I want to leave you with. And I want to, I want to challenge you to make this poem a reality in your life. Because I believe this is what it will require. That we believe this about ourselves. This is what it will require for us to be the best federal way possible. And to take today and make it matter tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the month after and the year after. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in all of us. And when we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And so I'm going to challenge you to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Adults, our number one job in life is to reflect the majesty and brilliance of the young people in our midst. To remind them when they don't see themselves as great that they are wonderful. And I want us to remember that the reason we can be in this room together today, black and white, Asian, Latino, Pacific Islander, is because of Dr. King. I wish he could see us today, but I want to challenge us to not just be satisfied with today, but to strive for excellence every day and where we see inequity, to say something and not to just say something, but do something and be something different. Dream a dream that's bigger than yourself. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm Kathy Arndt, and we hope you'll join us next time on New Day Federal Way.